This is Molly Newman for Wacom Pen Scrappers. In this video, I'll show you how to install and use the three Photoshop actions I've created for the June 2011 edition of Pen Scrappers. Begin by downloading the included zip file and then unzipping it either to your downloads folder or to another place on your computer where you'll be able to find it easily. Here are the contents of the unzipped file. In this video, we'll be working with the actions or ATN file included here. Make a note of where you've saved this file. Now launch Photoshop and go to your Actions palette. If it's not currently visible, in the Window menu, select Actions, or you can press Alt F9 for the keyboard shortcut. Open the drop down menu from the Actions palette and select Load Actions. Next, you'll navigate to that downloaded Actions file, then click on it to select and press enter or return to load it. When you click on the triangle next to the title of this action set, you'll find that it contains three actions, Portrait Pop, Yummy Pop, and Yummy Blur. We'll go through these one by one. Let's start with the Yummy Pop action. This one is designed to take food photos and pump them up a little bit by enhancing the color and the clarity to make them look good enough to eat. Open your food photo. Here I've got a burger on a brioche bun. In the Actions palette, select Yummy Pop, then press the Play button. First the action will change the background to a layer, and then pause to open the Levels palette. Pump up the color by dragging both the black and white points toward the center until they reach the areas on the histogram that are dark. This will ensure that you have a maximum dynamic range in your image, going all the way from pure black to pure white in value. You can see how the contrast is increasing as I move these sliders toward the center. Press OK when you're finished. The rest of this action will run on its own after you've finished correcting the levels. Let's take a look at exactly what's happened here. The vibrance has been increased. The vibrance setting is kind of cool. It means that it increases the saturation of all colors within the photo that are not perceived to be skin tones. This is also a great way to pump up a portrait. You can see here that this means that the brioche is yellower, the plate is bluer, and the spinach on the burger is greener for a much more appealing effect. Finally, this lens correction command applies a soft and subtle vignette to lighten the edges of the image. If you don't like the look of this vignetting on a particular image, or if you'd like to fine-tune any of the other results in this or any other action, you can open the history panel and you can either back up to a previous step in the image. Here's how this one looks without that lens correction vignette. Click it again to restore it. Or you can go back to any other point in the action such as the levels correction to remove that vibrance effect and fine-tune your result as you see fit. Next, let's take a look at the portrait pop action. This uses the high pass filter, one of those filters that you've probably experimented with before and not been sure exactly why anybody would use it, to boost sharpness and contrast in a way that creates a very dramatic look for special portraits. Select the Portrait Pop action and press play. The background layer will be duplicated and the duplicate layer will have the high pass filter applied. Here the action will pause to allow you to adjust the amount of filter applied to the image. The exact setting you'll want to use will depend on the resolution of your photo and its original size. The larger the original photo is, the higher the setting you can use. Try zooming in and out to see the effect. For this size photo, roughly 60 pixel radius will work pretty well. Click OK to complete the operation. The high pass layer has a blending mode of hard light applied to it. You can see the difference here as I show and hide that new layer. You can also adjust the opacity of this layer for a different look. A lower opacity will give a more subtle sharpening look, while higher opacity will give a very dramatic, almost grungy look. For this photo, I'll keep it at just over 30%. Finally, let's work with the Yummy Blur action. 
This one is a little bit different because it will also require you to load the gradient that is included with this month's downloads in order to apply a soft focus effect where the focal point of the picture will be in crisp detail and everything else will be gently softened, bringing the viewer's eye just to the most important parts of the photo. In the Actions palette, select Yummy Blur and press Play. The background layer will be duplicated and a lens blur applied. With the lens blur applied to the entire image layer, the picture looks soft and unfocused. Working on the layer mask, we'll now apply a gradient to create one in-focus area that softly fades out to a less detailed region. Select the gradient tool by pressing G, select Load Gradients, and browse to the gradient set included with this lesson. Press Load, select the Yummy Blur gradient. Now working on the layer mask, be sure you have the layer mask on the layer copy selected. Click on the area you want to be in sharpest focus with radial gradient selected. Drag outwards to apply the gradient. Notice how this brings a certain area into sharp focus while everything else remains in soft focus. If you don't like your first application of the gradient, you can always back up and try it again. Remember that the farther out you drag this gradient, the larger the area that will be in focus, and the smaller the gradient area, the smaller and sharper your focus area will be. For access to these Photoshop actions and lots of other cool resources, become part of the Wacom Pen Scrappers team at penscrappers.com.